podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Welcome to Scarlet's Fever, the home of Sospan Central and Westera is Bestera. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Scarlet's Fever. It's me, Catboy, here as normal. I'm not joined by Carwin, who is off on work this week, and I'm not sadly joined by Big M, who did attempt to join us, bless him, but he was a bit poorly. But I am joined by a special guest. I'm joined by TikTok and YouTube sensation, the sketchman himself, Bradley Gibson. Bradley, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Oh, no worries, mate. Thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, no bother at all. No bother at all. So what I think last time I checked, it was something like 150,000 TikTok fo- followers. So you've been doing this, what, just over a year now doing the rugby stuff? Yeah, about uh, a about, uh, year and a half. Yeah, just shy of a year and a half, I think, something like that. And for, for people who don't, maybe aren't on TikTok, maybe don't do YouTube shorts and things, maybe you just describe a bit of what you do and what it's all about. Um, Well, I, well basically what I do is just, I make rugby content, but I try and make um try and make it funny, try and bring like a comedy aspect to it. So like you said, I'll make sketches and things like that. Um just try and bring some fun and enjoyment to the sport rather than like it's a re- I love the sport, I love it, love it a bit, but I want to show that it's not always serious. We can have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a and we can take a mick of other teams but not to have not have it so serious, if that makes sense. Yeah, and are you surprised by how big the audience is for... Because you you bring the Scarlets into it quite a lot. You talk about the regions quite a lot. And it's very Welsh-centric. Sometimes it feels like operating in this space, it can be quite a small space. Are you kind of surprised how how big the audience is sometimes? Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought it was smaller than than what what, what I... Yeah, I thought it was smaller than what it was. Um, But then, yeah, like you said... Uh, sometimes I see it in, in a bigger light and there are actually a lot of eyes on it now. Um, and I feel like um, that started happening when the Six Nations got TikTok as a partner mm. um, and that sort of like shot it up. And I feel like it is growing a lot more now and a, a lot more on social media. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot more people than I thought was uh, are actually looking at it on social media. So have you been, are you getting offered all the hospitality packages and so come and come and film at our event? Believe it or not, I haven't been offered anything for, yeah. uh, to do with World Rugby Union. Nothing at all. But like English Prem, uh, Six Nations, I, I get all the offers for them, um, which is awesome. But for some reason, World Rugby Union is very difficult. They're very difficult to work with. You're not the first person I've heard that from. Um, but there are people at the Scarlets who at least have in the past listened to, to this pod. So... If you're listening, people of the Scarlets, there's a guy here with 150,000 TikTok followers would happily come down the park and uh, do a bit of f- filming there. Oh, f- thank you very much for putting that up there, mate. Cheers. No, um, definitely. I, I was just no, going to say, the, the, I can't, you know, we'll, 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 I've covered it in previous weeks and we'll cover it again in the future, but I can't get my head around how little... It's not even new media anymore. It's just it's just media um, yeah. that, that the Welsh regions do. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So, is it your full time gig doing TikTok, TikToks, and no. YouTube, or do you have a job as well? I have a job as well, so I'm a mechanic by trade. Uh, um, so obviously, I got my my nine to five. I do that, um, and then obviously, I do this like as a little hobby, just because I love to do it. So, Pete, do people recognise you when you do it? When when sorry, when real life, do people go, "Where do I know you from?" All the time, all the time. It's I literally. I was in the pub yesterday with my father and we were swarmed by about, must have been about 10 to 15 youngsters who knew who I was, um, which is awesome. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I can't appreciate it uh, in like anymore. It oh, is, uh, yeah. it's quite, um, well, if, like you said, there's uh, 150,000 people and that's a lot of people. Um, but you don't actually like, it's quite baffling um to actually like if you actually have had them in a room like that's a lot of people um and yeah I, I go out and how many people actually like know who i am is it's quite 
awesome in a way. It's, it is mm. quite amazing. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's just pretty cool. Yeah. Well, when sometimes when some of us um, from the rap family go to games, like we went to Judgment Day, the Ospreys pod gets it probably the most of people coming up and saying hello and, and shaking hands and things. And it is quite weird getting get yeah. recognized. Um, and it's like, like, I'm not John Lennon. Calm down. Like, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, it is kind, of, kind of odd. So tell us about your um, Scarlet's story then. Um, so are you a local boy? How long have you supported the Scarlet's? I'm Fletchley. Um, I'd like to say I'm still a casual rugby fan, but I am trying to learn like everything that I can um, to do with the sport in general. But yeah, like you said, Scarlets are my team. It's the Scarlets uh, and Welsh Rugby Union, obviously. And yeah. then my Prem team is Exeter. Um, right. But the Scarlets, I've been supporting them since I, was, since I was a youngster. I was going to the games in Stradi, uh, Stradi Park. Um, Take box. So, people at the Scarlets love to hear Estradi mention. There you go. Yeah. You're ticking off the boxes now. <laughs> so I was going there when I was a kid. Um, but like when I started, like actually, like really loving sport. I don't know about five years ago. Really, really got into it. Um, and that's why I wanted to do like all my rugby stuff now, which I'm doing. Um, yeah, just absolutely love it. Um, just a shame on the form of the Scarlets at the minute because I'm more than happy to go support them all the time. Um, but it's, it's just getting, we're not getting a result at the minute. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come on to that. So we'll talk about the season that's been in a minute, but just to go over some news then. So what we got, what we got. So Eddie James has been called up to the Wales squad. So we've, we missed last week, obviously. So there's a bit of catching up to be done. So Eddie James has been called up to the Wales squad, which is delighted about. Congrats, Eddie. Uh, we've had the, uh, Blair Murray and Henry Thomas signings, Jack Davis's, Signed a uh, contract extension. Um, Teddy Leatherbarrow, unfortunately, has uh, announced that he's leaving. What's your feeling about how the squad is, is shaping up for next season now, Brad? Um, you mentioned something before we started about the uh, the forwards being like quite weak. Um, and I completely agree. Um, and saw Henry Thomas coming in. Um, I'm quite like excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. Um, and then we got Harry O'Connor as well. So I feel like there is going to be. Um, hopefully, they have a bit of chemistry together, and they're going to do. They're going to do quite well. Um, but yeah, I think the forwards are starting to shape up a lot more. Um, so th there's definitely um, something to look forward to next season as far as forwards go. And a, a few Scarlets fans are kind of a bit uh, feeling a bit down about some of the situation now because we've seen. Um, Ted, Teddy Lau Teddy Leatherbarrow's gone and he wasn't a local boy, but he was like a young kid who people were in favour of. And we're kind yeah. of seeing something of, of a trend of like young kids being let go and older people from abroad being brought in. Now, I, part of me is like, well, that's, that doesn't happen as often people make it out that it, it does, but it it is seem to have seems to be happening a few times now. Kind of what, what's your, your feeling towards, towards that? Um. I I don't know to be honest. It's it's. Uh, I feel like we do need to be getting these youngsters in and just working on them for be getting rid of all these youngsters, but or them leaving or whatever the score is. It's not really um something that people are going to be like, oh, that's good. It's something you're going to be worried about. Um, and getting these again, getting these other players in from like abroad and things. Um, yeah, that's good. I'm um, getting some experience in, but we do really want to be working on these local boys and uh, getting some experience behind them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, absolutely agree. And you know, at a time when we're supposed to be cost cutting and things, it, it's difficult to paint the picture that you're doing that if you're letting young local talent go and bringing in older foreign talent yeah. in sport. It kind of does. It doesn't tell the story of a side that's cutting costs, even though that's what we're being told is happening. So. Maybe it is. And, you know, with, with Teddy, um, I know, having spoken to people and know him, that he's got opportunities uh, in other walks of life. Um, so if he if he turns out that he's he's not, he decided he doesn't want to do rugby as a career anymore, fair play to him. We, we'll see where he turns up. Um, so a couple of other bits of news. Uh, so the under-20s, Wales under-20s have been announced. We've got five players in there. Josh Moores, Isaac Young, Harry Thomas, uh, Luca Setaro. And uh, Max Page, 
who uh, have all been called up. So congratulations to those boys. We've got the EPCR draw we done on the 2nd of July. And now all community rugby fixtures have been released for next season. So people can go to their local club website and uh, find them there. Do you support any grassroots rugby clubs, any local clubs? Um, I don't really tend to follow it. Um, I know my work colleague plays for Llandovery, so he gives me the ins and outs. Um, really? I used to play... Yeah, um, I used to play for Furness. Um, well, I don't play anymore, but I used to play for Furness. Um, Scrum Half. So, sorry? Scrum Half. Scrum Half, yeah. <laughs> How do you know that? I Just by looking at you, you don't you, you don't look like the, the tallest guy, so you're not a second row. What do you mean? I'm, I'm massive. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm 5'7", so yeah, Scrum Half. Yeah. yeah, that's all I was going off. <laughs> Yeah, I've got like um I remember meeting Anton Dupont and we are literally the same build and What? Um, Hang, what how, how did you meet Anton Dupont? Um <laughs> oh, sorry, I've um I was working with the Six Nations for the launch, uh I think it was two years ago now. Well, not not the one just gone, the one before, so about a year and a half ago. Um right. and I had to I had to make a video of him. And uh yeah, he's like he's like an inch taller than me, but we're like the same build, and I was like, This is cool. <laughs> what did you get him to do? Uh, we were doing a keep you up challenge with from... a rugby ball. So I, was, I, I feel like I might have seen this. It's so uh, you... yeah, it on my. Um, so did you get tips? My, was it uh... tips or Ken was the captain for us then? Yeah, it was it was Ken uh, that uh, yeah yeah. I've seen the Ken one because he like hoofs it into the. Yeah, room, he, he, he hoofs it across the, across the room. Yeah, and um... fuck the rest of the questions I had lined up. Right. So <laughs> what do you mean? But so like. So you get a phone call off the Six Nations. Yeah. Come and come and do a bit of promo for us. Was yeah. it you, where was it? Did you have to hop on a plane? What? No, it was it was in London. Um I can't remember what the building was called, but it was by the um the big wheel thing, you know. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, you know what I'm on about, yeah. Um What was it the Houses of Parliament? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I might be wrong. I can't remember. Um No, I don't think it was the Parliament, no. Right. Um, but it was, it was around that area. Okay, and then you go, you go into the room like we. I'd be, I'd be shitting myself. Like I'm about to meet all the. I was very nervous because um, it was like the first thing I've ever done like that. Um, and then meeting all like my heroes essentially, where it was like proper nerve wracking. And then I, I got the chance to meet like uh, the rugby trainer and uh, the prop life. Uh, like so, I got the chance to meet all them. They're all awesome, nice people as well. Um, but obviously, I was very new to the space um, back then. I think I'd only been doing it for like a month or two then. So my heart was going 100 miles an hour. Um, yeah, proper nervous. So I'd, I'd, if it was me, I'd have given Sheriff the biggest hug. I'd have been like... He was, you know, he was such a lovely guy. Was he? Yeah, really genuine guy. Um, you could tell he was, he was probably quite nervous as well because he'd never done something as big as that you could tell he was like right good everyone's trying to get him to do things so he was like didn't know where to look and didn't know what to do so that was, you could tell it was a bit of nerves coming from his end as well but he was uh generally when he heard my accent he started he seemed to be like oh like he knew where i was from and he, he speak seemed welsh? to like really respond to me uh he, i think he does speak welsh but he didn't then know oh, okay do you speak welsh i don't but i'm learning uh okay maybe if you'd have, like popped a couple of words to him he'd have been like double, yeah. double, double happy about it. So who else was there? So I'm guessing Dupont can do a lot of keepy uppies. I think how many did he get? I think he got nine. Right. We were in a really small room as well, so it was hard. Um, I think Owen Farrell and Johnny Sexton both drew. I think they got ten. What's it like being in a room with those two? Is, are they quite in? Are they quite fierce presences? Sexton, I got on really well with. Um. And I got on with Farrell as well, um, Faz. Um, uh, Faz got on with me great. He seemed to be quite nice, quite pleasant. Um, I, I didn't have a problem with any of them. I thought they were all great. Um, I met uh, Miguel Amaro as well, the Italian captain. Yeah, He was probably my favourite. He was such a really fun character. As soon as he walked in the room, all eyes were on him. And he's, he was the only one out of them all to have that, that presence. Right, which really surprised me. But he was quite not like an intimidating kind of factor. It was all like he was a like a really funny character. That's awesome. So you're gonna get to do anything like that again? 
um hopefully um without like putting people in it uh they didn't do it the this the year just gone far yeah I, I probably won't talk about it but yeah um because of problems they had last year so they didn't do it again right. this okay year. but um yeah hopefully if i they said like um yeah if, if we uh if we do anything else again we'll call you i was like oh that was something but um yeah i'm always up to do anything like um I want to really work. I really want to do stuff for the Scarlets, but they're really hard to get hold of. Mr. Mudrak, check your WhatsApp after this. Um, <laughs> right. So, um, cool. Right. Let's talk about let's talk about the Scarlets then. Right. So the plan was um, to do a bit of a game by game season review this evening uh, with my esteemed professional uh, podcasting colleagues, unavailable for reasons. Um, We'll probably do a bit of a lighter version than I was expecting, but um, so it's been a long old season. Just, just generally, you know, I, I, my favorite video of yours is the one where uh, after we beat Benetton and you're going around singing "Sausage" oh, yeah. all around the all around yeah. the room. I enjoyed um, making the video. Yeah, yeah. Um, just generally, what, what have you found being a Scarlets fan this season? Just watching the actual team on the pitch. It's it's tough. They'll always get my support, but as a not like as an actual fan, like like not like me and you, we me and you would support them to the thick and thin with me. But like as a normal casual fan, you're looking. It's tough to support them when you know they're inevitably going to lose, which is a shame. And that's how I feel. How the season's gone. You're looking at the teams they're going up against, and you kind of knew they weren't going to stand a chance yeah yeah well speaking of that so we started our season our urc season down in south africa first game 63 21 defeat to the bulls which actually has not aged that badly as a result because there's a few teams who've gone down to the bulls and had that kind of a score line put on them obviously a couple of other regions had something pretty similar um you know an uncompetitive game but actually the the Bulls team that they put out um, against us is not that different to the one that just beat Leinster. Really? Like, yeah. It, it's like like Cameron Hennicom was played against us. Um, Goosen. Um, here we got Coach Sia, uh, Elric Lowe, um, Papier, the um, scrum half, uh, David Creel. Um, probably Vili, Vili Leroux is the biggest absentee who... who... He, d- he didn't play. Not against us, because oh. he was he would have still been playing at the World Cup at the time because the World Cup was still going oh, yeah, on at the this point. Fun. But the honest, like sixty three twenty one, I think it was a record defeat at the time, so it was shit, obviously. But it, with hindsight, with a whole season behind us, not that too in, embarrassing. Um, what have you made of of the? Did you ca- catch the Bulls semi final at the weekend? Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, I thought Leinster were going to run through them, um, but. If I feel like, I feel like if the Bulls lost, they would have been robbed. Because yeah. I, I feel like they just they deserve the win. They they were playing in all the right areas. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So our second game was at the Stormers. So it wasn't even in Cape Town. It was at Stellenbosch, which is where they play the under twenties, and it was nowhere near a first choice Stormers team. I think. Gomazulu was playing, and that's about the only first choice they had. Like Clayton Blumachie's playing fly half, for goodness sake, and yeah, fifty-two points to seven. Oh, know. so something that I'm probably going to say a lot during this is would be our worst ever performance, apart from this other game that happened this season. But I, I, I don't. Do you remember either watching or even seeing the scoreline for this one? Because it was. I remember absolutely losing my head watching this. Yeah, I think I was very frustrated myself. Um, I remember watching it and I was very upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was It was a bit of a, a sign of things to come, unfortunately, for the first half of the season. <laughs> Moving on from that, though, we then beat Cardiff. So I was at this game. We beat Cardiff on our first game at home, 31 points to 25. Yeah. Yeah, Go I think on, I went to that one as well. Oh, really? The, that's the, cool. the first home game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, yeah, we beat them, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, I went to that one. How did you find your day out? Um, I enjoyed it, yeah. I enjoyed that game. Um, And I was 
if, yeah, if I remember rightly, I was I was like really like proper riding on it. I was like, yeah, no, we're, we're the best team in the world. Awesome. Um, and then obviously the rest of the season didn't live up. But yeah, because this was at the same week. This was the one that was on the same day as the Barbars game, the Wales versus Barbarians game. That's it. Yeah, so, so I watched the Barbarians game against Wales in the barn before the game, and then yeah. went into the Scarlets to watch the Scarlets play. Because was that the last game for? Uh, Alan Wynne Jones. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Alan Wynne Jones was playing for the Barbars. Lee Halfpenny was playing his last game for Wales. In his last game for Lee Halfpenny. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I remember now. I thought that was a bad call as well to have those two games on the same day. Definitely, definitely, massively shafting ourselves. To be honest, um, as Welsh rugby, not just it's not blaming the Scarlets. It's not Scarlets' fault. It's the WIU's fault. But um, yeah. I feel like they've missed a lot of. Well, my knee potentially, because um, mm. I would have really liked to have done both those games. Mm. So what did you have much memory of the actual Scarlet's game itself? How you felt it went, the performance on the day? I'd be honest, I can't remember. I just remember winning and being very happy. Um, That's the main thing, then. Yeah, <laughs> the winning feeling. The next game was also at home, but it, we didn't get a winning feeling. This was the Lions game. Right. The one famous. I don't think I watched this one. The one famous for um, Steph Evans getting charged down in the last minute um, to concede a, a try, and we lost by one point. Oh. So I I did yeah sorry I watched that in the house though I watched that in the house. What can you sum up? Can you remember your feeling? I remember my my heart getting ripped though. No, that's what I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> my heart got absolutely wrenched. Yeah, I I was so I do the I do instant reactions to all all of the Scarlet's games on yeah. TikTok and um YouTube. And normally I just like sit sit in my chair like hit record, speak for 50 seconds, stop record, upload it. For this one, I did like four attempts because I was that yeah. I was that fuming. I was <laughs> like I got I got to the end of it and I watched it back and I was like I can't I can't post that. I'll be a laughing stock. I'm not trying to be Arsenal fan TV over here. Yeah. Um, and it was just because the 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 thing that made me angry was that it was it was a great performance and we we managed to lose the game in the sh- silliest of ways. Um, yeah, it's just very very tough, very tough. Next game was uh, away at Leinster, and it was the one where they rotated the side quite heavily and we went down 50 po- 54 points to five yeah um i don't know did you get do you have any memory of this one i think it's one of that people try to forget quite quickly i think i um i hate to admit it, i think i turned it off at half time just because of how frustrated i was and um yeah yeah i, remember, I think that is the one i was like oh yeah. i can't do it Steph. yeah I, it was it was bad. And well, the thing is, because we put out like a rotated squad and Leinster went full strength, there were actually some kids who played quite well in this game. Like, I think yeah. we had a back row of Leather Barrow, Ben Williams, and Carmen Tupelotu. And I think they all had pretty good games. And Charlie Titcombe got his only start of the season at 10, and he had quite a good game. It was Tommy Lewis's yeah. first game as well for us. And they actually played quite well. It was the stat about this game is that we conceded half the points in the first 20 minutes and half the points in the last 20 minutes. And we had 40 minutes in the middle where we didn't concede any points. Yeah. So it was kind of like, oh, that's not that bad. And I remember at the time doing the pod and saying, like, there was actually, you know, some not so bad bits about that performance. And other fans going, like, well, what are you talking about? Scarlet's fans, you're taking 50, shut up. And yeah. later in the season, some other. Re- one other particular region went to Leinster, got sixty points put on them, and everyone was like, "Oh well, you know, brave, you're so brave." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know exactly. What you're I remember. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, we then went to the Ospreys and lost thirty-one points to nine. Yeah, um, I tried to forget about that one. To be honest, mate, <laughs> it was peeing down with rain, and. Uh, Obviously suited the Osprey's game plan more than ours, and you know the referee probably robbed us or something. Um, then it was the second Cardiff game, which I was at as well, which we won again, twenty nine points to twenty three. Cardiff down to fourteen men. Um, 
Gareth Davis had a stormer in this game. Yeah, yeah. I remember the game, yeah, because we, we won that one as well, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I thought we I thought we played uh, quite well in that game, um, considering they had uh, a man down anyway, but Yeah. They fell apart a, a little bit, to be honest. Um and there was I think I, I looked at the stats after the game and I think there was like four or five Scarlet's players who had statistically amazing games. And I think that kind of was the difference got us through it. Cardiff fans absolutely fuming because we obviously finished the season with more wins than Cardiff. And they're like, <laughs> how did we give you lot two wins? And it's like, well, yeah, we, we just, we're just better than you. That's why. Um, So on to the challenge cup was next. And we had games against a game against Castro, which was not even on TV. So people couldn't even watch it. And then we had probably the probably the lowest point, at least definitely for me, supporting the Scarlets, um, was the defeat at home to Black Lion. Um, oh, yeah, Jordan that's the, uh, was that the Georgian team. Yeah. yeah I remember. Yeah. Did, did you did you even watch this? I did, um, because I thought this would have been an easy win. Um, but no, uh, I think we got, we got pissed, didn't we? No, it's twenty three points to seven. We scored a try in the first five minutes and then didn't score again for the rest of the game. Yeah, I remember being very upset about this one. I'm heartbroken because I didn't. I generally thought we were going to go through them. Um, because I, I think it was the first time I ever like heard of uh, Black yeah, Lion. It's the first time ever playing in the Challenge Cup. Yeah. So and then they they went through us and I was like, oh god, no. Yeah. It was. It was pretty bad. Like we did a whole pod after it. So if people want to hear more of our thoughts, like scroll back in on your podcasting and find one from after that in December. It, it was it was a it was a bad time, and we were very <laughs> unhappy. And there was a yeah. lot of a uh, lot of noises came out of the Scarlets afterwards about how, like, no, we're gonna have to change something now and things. So, right, let's finish dwelling on that. I'm 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 going down the. I'm trying to not make this bit repetitive, to be honest, but we're going down the list of results, and there's a lot of red L's on this <laughs> on this yeah. flash score page that I've got here. So then we had the Boxing Day defeat to the Osprey's. They did the double over us. Is yeah. the is the Boxing Day fixture or some something that you normally go to? Yeah, yeah. Um, did I go to this one? No, I don't think I went this year. Well, this season, um, because I think I had to work. Yeah, I think I was working, so I couldn't go. Um, but yeah, normally I do go to the Boxing Day, uh, the Boxing Day derbies. Yeah, the thing I remember about this game is it was nil nil at half time. <laughs> yeah, bad game. A bad yeah. game. And to, I remember to... watching it afterwards. I couldn't watch it live, and I, I just, just literally was thinking. Normally these games are quite exciting, mm. but I just didn't know what to think about this game. Yeah disappointing and then we had the new year's day defeat to the scar to the dragons rather uh where sam costello missed the kick in front of the posts that was a, that was a killer but the thing frustrating about thing about that as well is a bit like the lions game we were clearly the better side yeah We've just completely failed to to turn it into a result it's just losing back-to-back -back derbies like that after the black lion defeat and you're starting to really suffer as a fan aren't you yeah i think a lot of people started to turn out like around this time as well because mm. just the results we were expecting to bounce back but we just didn't we seemed to be getting worse yeah we then had to more challenge cup fixtures so there was a loss to claremont away where johnny williams got red card is then we lost to edinburgh at home 31 points to 19 then we lost to munster at home during the Six Nations, 42-7. Then Karnak away, 26 points to 10. I'm just rattling through these because they're all basically the same game. But Ben, it was your favourite game. Scarlet's beating Benetton, 16 like points to 13. One, yeah. Edwin Swart, man of the match performance, having been on the pitch for five minutes, flopped over yeah. the line at the back of the driving wall. T t tell me about your feeling watching that game because for you to just grab your phone and go right i've got to make a video about this it must have been a good feeling i this is the thing it was because i hadn't watched the scars game at that point for i think it was three or maybe four games so the last four games prior i hadn't watched just because i was sort of getting like fed up and frustrated 
Um, and then I just like sort of had a feeling. I was like, oh, you know, what? I'm going to watch the Benton game, and I feel like we're going to do something. We're going to put something at the bag. So I was going into this game thinking Scarlets are going to win this game, which is weird because we hadn't won a game in a long time prior to that. Um, and then watching it, and then we ended up winning. And obviously, I then went on to make that funny TikTok, which everyone seemed to love. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite videos as well because I I think I made that in like five minutes after the, the final whistle. Oh, really? It it, it literally it went up straight away, and I was I was like, this is so funny, and whether people liked it or not, I enjoyed making that video. I thought it was awesome. I loved it. It's my favorite one of yours. <laughs> I thought it was great. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I can see sometimes why people like call Scarlet Smith like one-eyed Turks and things because you literally win one game and it's like I'm gonna win the league. We're the best yeah, team in the world. Yeah, yeah. I I tend to be like that with like Wales as well. Like, um, oh, Wales are the best team in the world. Like, Scarlet's the best team in the world. And uh, I'll always get the comments like, oh, you're so delusional. You you don't know anything. But I like that. I like I know that Scarlet's yeah. aren't the best team in the world. But I like play on it and uh, get people talking. Yeah, so I love. Point. It's, like it's the point of being a fan, isn't it? I mean, if you can't if you can't be happy about it, like we'll get to some games later on that we won, and people are like, Oh yeah, but you played against rubbish teams. It's like, well, I'm sorry for being happy that my team won. You know, yeah, yeah. That's what's it. The, what's, yeah. The, what's the point of it otherwise? Um so on to kind of on this subject, I saw because the like the discussion around like playing the, the Bulls in the URC semifinals this season, I saw someone posted like our oh, twenty seventeen Scarlets would absolutely batter both of these. And I found myself yeah. thinking like yeah, we would. Yeah, we would. Yeah, we, we would. Twenty seventeen Scarlets absolutely hammer both of the uh, Leinster and the Bulls. Yeah, definitely. I I completely agree. Yeah, definitely. We no, were a solid team back then. Yeah, no, no more discussion needed. Unfortunately, <laughs> the next game after this, again, if it wasn't for the Black Line game, would be probably the worst Scarlets performance of the season. Forty-five to three at home against Glasgow. I don't know yeah, about you, but like not scoring a try at home for me, for any rugby team, should be immediate refunds to all the fans. Like, yeah, I think uh, I watched that and there was alarm bells ringing. Um, what was going on? I know Glasgow have been; uh, they've had a great season, but to only get three points at home, like you said, it's that's a bit of a joke, to be honest. Yeah, if we were playing the All Blacks at home, I'd expect us to score a try. Yeah, like, and then we went on and lost forty three points to eighteen to Edinburgh away. But that was that weird game that we were winning at half time and then just completely fell apart. Oh yeah, we fell apart. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, remember, I watched that one as well. Um, yeah, because yeah, I think yeah after that Benetton game, I think I t- I, I watched all the games then. I, I sort yeah. of go back into it and then, but then we never got results after that, did we? Well, we fit, finished the season all right, but with the Edinburgh game, it was kind of a case of like. We're winning and we scored two tries in the first half. And it was like, could we win this? Because Edinburgh weren't amazing. And then it was it was one of those where you get to the full time and you see the scoreboard and you think, how's that happened? How did we lose that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we then lost at home to the Sharks, who went on to absolutely destroy Gloucester in the Challenge Cup final, basically the same team. Yeah. Uh, even Etzebeth and that. Again... That was another one where you were like, the performances are starting to turn here. Yeah. Starting to see like a bit of green shoots. I think we had a few more players coming back. Like I think Plumtree was back in the team and we were getting a bit more settled in selection. Do, are you much of a of an armchair selector like the rest of us where you, you'll see the team come out on a Friday and you think, oh, why has he picked him? Or what's he doing there? Or should have picked him? Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, but I like to see like, these younger players getting experience. Like uh, I quite like um uh Tupolotto. Um mm. I think he needs to be like starting a lot more than he has been. Um I've I've had the pleasure of meeting him as well. Uh, he's, he's oh, really uh, quite, yeah he's he's quite a nice guy as well. Uh good character. Um I yeah I do I feel like we need to be starting him a lot more because he's a youngster. Uh, he's quite a big boy as well. Yeah. Um so he, I think he does need a few more games starting to get more experience. So I feel like he, the more games he's going to get, I feel like he is going to be a, a powerhouse, an absolute menace to be reckoned with. Yeah, absolutely agree. We we love him on this pod. We then got another home defeat to Ulster, but then we finished the season with uh, two 32-point victories, one away at Zebra and one at home. 
to uh, the Dragons uh, on Judgment Day. So yeah. kind of, I don't know, do you feel like with those two wins at the end of the season, do you feel like we've we've turned the ship around at all? Uh, as much as I like being another Welsh region, uh, beating another Welsh region, um, uh, we did do really well in the first half. Uh, we sort of crumbled towards the end, but we still got the win, which is great to see. Um, but again, the Dragons haven't had a, a their fair best of the seasons, have they? So, um, and then we had a win over Zebra, which again, uh, is bottom of the board. So, is there much bragging rights for these being these two teams? Um, I'm not too sure, but it's always nice coming back from the, the Boxing Day, um, the New Year's Day derby with the Dragons after losing against them. So coming back mm. and beating them was also really yeah. good. Um, and also it is Welsh bragging rights as well. We've beaten another Welsh team, so that's good. But um, like, look at the season prior when we got to, was it the quarterfinals or was it the semifinals in the Challenge Cup? We got Cup? to the semifinal of the Challenge Cup, yeah. Uh, and then we were looking at a really good season for the next one, and well, look what happened. So I don't know. Winning these games does it actually mean anything? Yeah, I think that's the that's the worry amongst the fans now is that this season, you know, minus the Challenge Cup in terms of the league, was has been like exactly the same as last season. So we're we're all feeling like, oh, we were all really happy at the end of last season. Yeah. Um, is it gonna? Is it? Are we going to lose it all again over the summer? You've got to hope that it won't. You've got to hope that there's a bit of stability in the coaching setup. Um, unfortunately, there hasn't been the stability in the uh, in the squad. We've had a lot of levers and a lot of new players coming in. Hopefully, we're improved. But yeah, so I think, is it fair to say that this is a season that we'll all try and forget? I agree. I think it can only get better from here, I think. Yeah. Okay, mate. Right. So that's that's the end of our whistle stop tour of the season. Um, I think from for a listener's point of view, the Scarlets pod, I think we'll do another couple of pods reviewing the season before we finish up for the summer. Um, but for now, thank you so much, Brad, for joining. And I hope that someone at the Scarlets gives you uh, uh slides into your dms and uh, invites you to come down the park and film some stuff and get some get some marketing going for them because god knows that uh, everybody in welsh rugby needs it and yeah, Hopefully, just yeah generally cheers for helping us out and uh, recording a podcast tonight well thank you for having me on it's been a pleasure to be honest um my first time on a podcast so um yeah you've taken my virginity i guess <laughs> my podcast well, virginity it was um, easy um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it didn't take much convincing, to be honest. Yeah, no, no. I appreciate and cheers for saying yes, mate. And um, hopefully, enjoy your summer. Are you off on holidays anywhere? I uh, got nothing booked yet. Um, but maybe something in August. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Hopefully, we have a better summer this summer yeah. than last summer. And are you are you excited for the Welsh tour of? Well, we're playing South Africa this weekend, and then two games against Australia. What's your what's your feeling going oh. into them? Very like, fortunate to be going to Twickenham to go oh, watch really? the game. Are you seeing both so, games? Both games. Awesome. So I'm really excited for that because uh, I've never been to Twickenham either. So this will be my first Haven't time. You? Never. It's not as good as the Principality. Um, I've heard that. So I don't really have like high hopes for it, but I think I'll still enjoy it. Yeah, it's, it's all right. And uh, I've been a few times. One time I was sat right up in the gods and it's got all like plastic like a greenhouse at the top oh, right. and where I was sat and I was just absolutely roasting and it was like seven quid for a pint of Guinness and oh, uh, no. yeah are you just going as a fan or are you doing any filming I'm just going as a fan yeah I might do like a, a like a day in a life and I'll film everything yeah do it, do it, do it. I guess yeah. a bit yeah, yeah um, just well, to make the most of it I did one I did one of those for going to for Judgment Day and it's I did got, see yeah I enjoyed that yeah and it got um Got loads of views to be fair. Um how many is it on now? The people at home. It's on 17k views, which is tons for us. Yeah. Um so yeah, definitely, definitely do it. Definitely do it. Yeah, so I'm really excited about the, the Twickenham game. Um I I feel we're gonna get a paste in, but also there's not a lot of spring box uh uh being set up that are gonna be able to play. So it gives me a bit of like uh, but then also oh, there's a few of our players that aren't gonna be able to play. So we yeah. shall see. Yeah, and um, 
I, I if I I kind of thought about going, but I can't. But um, I'd be kind of a bit more excited to see Barbarians Fiji, to be honest. Yeah, that's why I that was the thing that made me. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna buy tickets. Yeah, because uh, I want to. I'm quite looking forward to that because I like watching Fiji play anyway. Yeah, um, and a Barbas game is always exciting. So yeah, yeah, fantastic stuff. Well, I hope you really enjoy it. Okay, mate. I think we'll leave it there. Um, remember all the people listening at home to if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. If you're listening on the audio version, leave us a lovely review. If you leave us lovely comments, uh, we'll read them out on the show and uh, don't forget to get involved on social medias as well. All right. Uh, cheers, everybody. Leave it there. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to the Scarlet's Fever podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to us as it really helps us spread the word. You can find us on all the usual social media channels or email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. And remember, whatever the question, rugby is always the answer. Podcast Network.